Estimates vary, but um, generally it's thought that 30% um, of homeless people suffer from severe and persistent mental illness. The people who have mental illness who end up homeless are among the most marginalized in society, the most marginalized psychiatric patients. A lot of patients are not able to engage into treatment through the normal avenues and um, I feel that staffing psychiatrists right in the drop-in centers, on the outreach teams, in the halfway houses is really the best, sometimes the only way to reach some of these terribly disturbed patients. Um, there is an incredible need for psychiatrists, psychiatric nurse practitioners, nurses and social workers to work um, with the urban homeless population and work with the homeless mentally ill population in particular. The outreach program is the first step to engaging um, many of these people into psychiatric treatment. see a lot of people today. I'm hoping. The reach out that we're going to be doing right now is basically uh, we're on the street run and um, we're going to be covering um, the Upper West Side from 100, from 110th Street all the way down to 59th Street and that's Our goal is to bring people off the street and uh, get them back into the community get them into permanent housing where they can function and have a healthy life. That's the tough part. Yeah. <laughs> Our first engagement tool is actually um, this little bag that we have here um, filled with food, um, peanut butter and jelly, sandwich, cookies, juice, and the most important part which would be this little flyer which has all of our information on it. Ready, William? Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. He might be asleep. I don't... Yeah. Well, he is asleep, obviously. Yeah. Should we... we try. Good morning, Scott. Morning. Scott? Hey. How are you? Hey. How are you today? Oh, hi. Oh. Isn't it a beautiful day? Right? Yeah. How have you been? Hi. Hi. You mind if I sit down? Okay. How have you been? I feel like it. So, so? Right. I suppose I'm all right. All right? Okay. And you know that you're always welcome to come by. All right. Okay. All right. It's good seeing you again. Take care, Scott. Scott decided to take a walk. He's actually one of our more pleasant, our, uh, pleasant clients. He's very easy to uh, talk to. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping one day that he'll come in. When you can get clinicians who are dedicated to working with this popula population, working right there, it tends to work um, real miracles, um, and we've been able to um, help a lot of people into housing who have just been in the margins for years, even decades. This is Marshawn. We've been working together um, for about six months since she came to the open door, and um, during that time, um, we've been seeing each other about once a week, once every two weeks. Um, we've been working together on medication. She's also started a day treatment program nearby, and um, it's very exciting for her now because on Monday in three days, she's going to be moving in for the first time into independent housing. Um, it's it's scary, but with Dr. Dylan's help and a lot of the other people here, I've gotten a lot out of it. I've gotten a lot of help, and I'm happy. I'm proud of myself. 
They make you have great self-esteem about yourself. The counselors, Dr. Dillon, the caseworkers here, social workers and things like that. It's very important to me. I'm not sure that I would be able to have the privilege of doing this kind of work um, were it not for the National Health Service Corps. To any prospective clinician who is dedicated to working with the underserved, I think the NHSC is a very good program. Um, it's hard to predict at the outset um, what exactly will impact on your career decisions. As long as you're within your own self, sure that you want to work with the underserved, um, the NHSC definitely makes that possible and gives you the flexibility within that to choose your own path in some real ways.